Okay, ready? Hi everyone, I'm Ava and today I'm going to be talking to you about Edgar Allan Poe. So to start off, he was born on January 19th, 1809 in Boston. He lived a solid 40 years. <laughs> Okay, so he was an American writer, poet, and critic. So he is known for capturing the imagination and interest of readers around the world. He never really knew his parents growing up. His father left him at an early age and his mother passed away from stupid tuberculosis when he was only three years old. So Edgar had a brother and a sister. The brother is named William Henry Leonard Poe and his sister is named Rosalie Mackenzie Poe. After that, he went to live with his godfather, John Allen. John and Edgar had a difficult relationship. John would always discourage Edgar about his literary talents. John wanted Edgar to follow along with the family business, but Edgar was passionate about writing. As he got older, he went to the University of Virginia for only 11 months. This was because he did not receive enough funds from John Allen. Edgar's solution was gambling, but ended up in serious debt. John kicked him out because of his irresponsible choices. Later on, Poe married his cousin, Virginia. <laughs> I gotta make that face because like they're cousins. Like, that's weird. And speaking of possibly unconsummated cousin marriages, Edgar Allan Poe married his 13-year-old cousin, Virginia Eliza Clem, in 1836. Many biographers think this is more of like a brother-sister relationship than a sexual one, and in fact, they may never have done the deed. But at any rate, they remained married until Virginia died from tuberculosis when she was 24. Stupid tuberculosis is always ruining everything. Virginia was his literary inspiration, but she later on died from... Stupid tuberculosis. Okay, so now let's talk about his writing. So Poe changed the writing world. Before Poe, people couldn't make a profession out of writing, but he did. Most of the poems that he writes are very dark and sad. These are two very strong characteristics in Poe's writing. Edgar's most famous poems are Annabelle Lee, A Dream Within a Dream, and The Raven. One of many inspirations were actual objects, people, or events. For example, the poem The Raven was inspired by an actual raven. The many deaths in his life has made him depressed, which led him to drink more, which had a huge influence on his writing. He was addicted to opium, which is a hardcore drug. Like, why opium? <laughs> Another inspiration was that he was always financially distressed. So in order to make money, he had to write. He is also known for being the father of detective stories because the short story, The Murders in the Rue Morgue, was considered the first modern detective story. This inspired Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who is the creator of Sherlock Holmes. He is also known for becoming famous after his death. This is called Posthumous. As I mentioned earlier, Poe was never successful financially but his works are more well known now than they were when he was alive. So now let's talk about his death. So Poe mysteriously died on October 7th, 1849, and to this day, nobody knows why. Some people believe that he died of alcohol consumption, while others believe that it was a poisoning of carbon monoxide. His last words were, Lord, help my poor soul. After he died, his rivalry, Rufus Griswold, would spread a bunch of hatred about Edgar. He would say that he was a mentally deranged drunkard and a womanizer. After he died, there was this tradition called the Poe Toaster. So on his birthday, this unidentified man would come to his grave and leave three roses of, and a bottle of cognac. He would also raise a toast in to Poe's memory. It is a tradition that many thought was never more, but the mysterious Poe toaster returns to Baltimore. Nice tune. There he is. Crowds caught a first and last glimpse of the new toaster during a birthday tribute to Edgar Allan Poe this weekend. The tradition dates back to 
to the 1940s when a dark, mysterious figure would lay three roses and a bottle of cognac on Poe's grave on his birthday. But back in 2009, the mysterious person all of a sudden just disappeared. So the Maryland Historic Society and Poe Baltimore held a competition to find a new Poe toaster. And keeping this tradition alive, this man's identity is remaining a mystery. The poem that I'm going to be talking to you about is one of the most well-known poems called The Raven. The Raven Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. To some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this, and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, Vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here forevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend. I shrieked, upstarting, get thee back into the tempest and the night's Plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken, quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting. Still is sitting on the padded bust of Pallas, just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming. And the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul, from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor, shall be lifted. So this poem is about a man going through depression after the loss of his lover, Lenore. One night when he was trying to distract himself, a raven came through the chamber doors talking to the man. The raven keeps repeating nevermore, meaning that the man and Lenore will nevermore be together. The raven stays until the end of the poem, reminding him of what he lost. The raven is symbolic because it represents darkness and sadness. The raven reminds the man that for the rest of his life, he will always be in despair. So there's also a lot of imagery taking place in the first two and the last two stanzas. So the key words are dying, December, ghost, sorrow, dreary, and demons. So when you read the poem, you picture it not being very happy and uplifting and more depressing and dark. Okay, so in this line, it shows that in December, death happens. You also recognize that this poem isn't going to be such a nice and happy poem. Okay, so Poe uses a lot of in this poem, but one of them is when he's comparing the raven's eyes to a demon. 